Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. I'm your host, Sean Ian. In today's video, we'll be going over how to write a proof by contradiction. I love going over these topics in logic because they're important not just for mathematics, but for critical thinking and being able to create a well-reasoned argument outside of mathematics. Contradiction is a very powerful proof technique, so it's important that you're comfortable using it, and I hope this lesson helps. What we're going to do first is go over how a proof by contradiction works logically, and then we'll run through an example, and that'll be it. So let's say we have a proposition P, and this is what we're trying to prove is true by contradiction. Then what you do first is assume that your proposition is false. In other words, you assume the negation, written like this, is true. What you're doing is assuming that your proposition is false for the sake of demonstrating a contradiction. So after assuming that the negation of your proposition is true, you show that that implies that two propositions are true, some proposition Q and the negation of Q. And this is the contradiction. You're showing that if your proposition is not true, then some other proposition is both true and false at the same time. That violates the law of non-contradiction, which says that a proposition can't be both true and false at the same time. Thus, the assumption that led to that contradiction can't be true. Now our assumption was that our proposition was false, and by the law of the excluded middle, a proposition has to be either true or false. So if our proposition can't be false, then our proposition P must be true. And that's how a proof by contradiction works. And if it's still not clicking, then maybe the example will help, or you can always ask a question in the comments. So let's move on to the example. We're going to go over one of my favorite examples of a proof by contradiction, proving that there exist infinitely many primes. Very awesome result. So for starters, we want to assume that this is not true. So think to yourself for a minute, what would that mean? If we assume that this is not true, then what are we going to assume is true? Well, let me paste that assumption in here. So what we do is suppose, for the sake of contradiction, that infinitely many primes do not exist. That means that there exists only a finite number of primes, and we'll say that that number is n. So there exist only n primes. So we assumed that our proposition was false, which means that this statement is true, which means that this statement has to be true for some positive integer n. So now let's consider a number we'll call p, and p is equal to this product, the first prime that we'll call p1, multiplied by the second prime, p2, multiplied by the third prime, p3, all the way up to the last prime, which we know is pn, because there exist only n primes. And then add 1 to that product. So this is our number p. It's the product of every prime that exists plus 1. So now we know a couple things about this number p. We know that p is greater than every prime. So we'll write p is greater than pi for all 1 less than or equal to i, less than or equal to n, because we know that i ranges from 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n. So p is greater than every prime, and that is clear by how p is defined. Thus, we know that p is not equal to any prime. So p does not equal any prime pi for this same range of i values. So since p isn't equal to any of these primes, and these are all of the prime numbers, we know that p isn't prime, thus p must be divisible by one of the primes in this product. So we know that some prime, we'll call it pm, divides our number p. We know this is true for some m greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to n, because again, our number p isn't prime. So it's got to be divisible by one of these guys. But notice, again by how p is defined, if we were to divide it by any of the prime numbers, we would always have a remainder of 1, which means that p is not divisible by any of the primes. So we can say that p i does not divide p for every i that is greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to n. And now that's our contradiction, because remember, we said previously that some prime does divide p. So there existed some m in this range, so that p m divides p. We showed that one of these prime numbers has to divide p, and we also showed that that's clearly not possible. 
because there's always going to be this remainder of 1. Thus, by contradiction, we get the proposition we wanted. There exist infinitely many primes, because when we assumed that there existed finitely many primes and not infinitely many primes, we were able to show that that leads to a contradiction. And if you didn't understand my explanation of the proof, just give it a search and you'll be able to find many other explanations of the proof that you might find more clear. But before you do that, I recommend that you take on this challenge. Try proving this proposition by contradiction. There exists no smallest positive rational number. And remember that a rational number is a number that can be written in this form. A over B, where A and B are integers, and B is not equal to zero. So give it a shot and try to prove this proposition by contradiction. Of course, you can always look up a solution and I'll also do a lesson on this proof. But give it a shot yourself and see how it goes. So I hope this video helped you understand how to write a proof by contradiction and why it works logically. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. I can't wait for my